Hi, we'd like to prove Marta's theorem. Marta's theorem says um, if k is a positive integer and you have a graph g um, such that the ratio between the number of edges of g uh, divided by the number of vertices is at least 2k, then g has a k plus 1 connected subgraph h um, whose corresponding sort of density, the number of edges of h divided by the number of vertices of h, is not much smaller than the density of g. It's the number of edges, it's strictly bigger than the number of edges of g divided by the number of vertices of g, take away k. So we'd like to prove this. Okay. Um, first let's um, just introduce some notation for the density of g, so the number of edges of g divided by the number of vertices, which we just denote by um, the sort of absolute value bars around g, and we call that gamma. By assumption, we have gamma is greater than or equal to 2k. And we're going to focus on a set of subgraphs of g with the following property. So we consider um, all subgraphs, really the set of all subgraphs, g primed of g such that, well, they firstly need to be large enough in terms of vertices, so they need at least 2k vertices, and the number of edges of this subgraph g prime should be strictly bigger than gamma times the number of vertices of g prime minus k, like that. So we'll call that property star. And we want to claim such subgraphs exist um, we're actually going to show G itself satisfies star. So firstly, why should that be? Um, so, well, think about the average degree of G. G has average degree. Well, if you want to average over all of the degrees, it should be the sum of the degrees which is twice the number of edges, that's the handshaking lemma, divided by the number of vertices, and that is just going to be at least 4k. The average degree is at least 4k, so in particular the number of vertices in G is at least 4k, which is easily big enough for the first condition. And then next um, we'll have a look at the number of edges of G, and there's a couple of different ways you can see this. Let's go by the definition of gamma. The number of edges of G is exactly gamma times the number of vertices of G by the definition of gamma. And that's obviously strictly bigger than gamma times the number of vertices of G minus a positive integer. So we see that um, indeed uh, G satisfies star, okay? Now what are we going to do? We're going to consider the set of all subgraphs that satisfy this property star and take the smallest one. So the next thing that we do is we say let H be a subgraph of G of smallest order, smallest number of vertices, okay, which satisfies this property star. Now I'm just going to sort of scoot that down to there. We're going to make a few claims about this subgraph H. H is going to be the subgraph that does the job um, in the statement of the theorem. Okay, claim one. I think we're going to have uh, three of these claims. Claim one says no graph G prime which actually satisfies star can have order number of vertices exactly 2k. Okay, so up here um, we said the number of vertices was at least 2k. Now we're saying it can't be strictly equals to 2k. So let's see why not. 
Um, why not? So if G prime satisfies star and the number of vertices in G prime is exactly 2K, then what you end up with, um, something funny goes on with the number of edges. So the number of edges of G primed is strictly bigger than um, gamma times K because it's the number of vertices in G minus K, which is exactly K in this case. And gamma by assumption is at least 2K. So this is at least 2K squared. And when you check it, that's just too big. It's bigger than the number of vertices choose two, which is the largest possible size the edge set could be. So this is a contradiction. Okay. So any subgraph which satisfies star actually has to have strictly more than 2k vertices. And now we're going to have uh, claim two. Uh, we'll see that the minimum degree of H is strictly greater than gamma. So why should that be the case? Well, uh, again, a contradiction proof. Oh, so that says gamma. Okay. I'll just have to scoot this up a bit. Proof. For a contradiction, let's suppose that the minimum degree of H is at most gamma. Then we can delete a vertex of minimum degree. Um, so let's do that. Deleting a vertex of minimum degree in the subgraph H um, gives a graph G prime, which is a subgraph of H which I'll denote by this subset equals to. Okay, so that just means it's a subgraph of H. Um, and what's the problem with G prime? We see that G prime satisfies star, which should be a contradiction because H is supposed to be uh, minimal. Okay, so as soon as we show that it satisfies star, we've got a problem. So this is because the number of vertices in G primed is the number of vertices in H primed minus one, and that is at least 2K still by claim one. So we know that H itself uh, has strictly more than 2K vertices in it. And the second thing is that the number of edges of G primed, the biggest that we took away, it's the degree of the vertex we deleted which is um, at most gamma. It was minimum degree, and we've assumed the minimum degree uh, is at most gamma. That's this assumption here. So we've only deleted at most gamma edges, and then this is strictly bigger than, um, well, the number of edges of H is strictly bigger than gamma times the number of edges of the number of vertices of H minus K. That's because H satisfies star, and now we're just subtracting one because of, uh, this. So we get this thing and this is exactly equal to gamma times the number of vertices of G primed minus K. So that means that we've shown that G prime satisfies star, but that's a contradiction. Um, so this contradicts the minimality of H. So it can't be true. Whoops. It can't be true that the minimum degree of H was at most gamma, so we've shown that claim two holds. All right, that's an exclamation mark down here at the bottom, and we've um, proved claim two. Fine. Now, um, in particular, some thing that um, follows from claim two, I'll just say hence, the number of vertices of H 
is also greater than or equal to gamma because you've got at least one vertex with this minimum degree of gamma, strictly bigger than gamma. So this is um, a bit sloppier than what we need. Now, uh, I want to show that H satisfies the requirements of the theorem. So we just um, divide the thing that we know is true, which is that the number of edges of H is bounded below by gamma times the number of vertices of H minus K. We just divide that by the number of vertices in H to obtain um, one of the things that we needed in the theorem statement, which was that the density of H is not too, not too small. So you haven't lost a lot of density. What you get is that the density of H, because star holds, it's um, bounded below by gamma minus gamma K over the number of vertices in H. And you can check that because the number of vertices in H is bounded below by gamma, this is actually bounded below by gamma minus K. And that's one of the things we needed for the theorem statement. So I'll just put there as required. And now when you look back at the theorem statement, the final thing that we have to show is um, that H is K plus one connected. So let's just scroll up a bit and put claim three. H is K plus one connected. Okay. Now, we know um, that vertex connectivity, the definition has two parts. It's possible that the number of vertices might be too small if something fails to be, I don't know, K connected or K plus one connected, or otherwise it means that you have a small um, cut set. So in this case, we know that the number of vertices of H is at least gamma and by assumption gamma is at least 2K. So it's certainly not the case that we ran out of vertices. Um, what we must have is a small separating set. H must have a separating set of order at most K. meaning a set of vertices of size at most K, order at most K that you can delete and disconnect um, H. So H comes in two parts. I'm not saying those two parts are connected. We're going to call the, the blob on the left H1, the blob on the right H2, and this is the set that disconnects them, and there must be at least one vertex on either side. This is a definition that we saw as a separation. So we're going to let U1, U2, the set of those two sets of vertices, be a proper separation. And we went over those. Um, you can find the definition of proper separation in the notes. And the intersection is the separating set. So the size of the intersection is at most K. Okay, that's the picture that we've got here. And the symmetric difference of each is uh, non-empty. And as I've written in this picture, we're going to write um, HI is the subgraph H, and then you take an induced subgraph of H induced by the vertex set U1. So that's what I've actually shown in this picture. And that is for I equals one two, because a separation is a pair of subsets of vertices. And now we're going to consider um, this vertex that I've shown here, V, which is in H1, but not, uh, sorry, U1, but not U2. So let V belong to U1, take away U2. We know there must be such a vertex V, and we also have a vertex over here called W. Okay. Now, all the neighbors of V must live in um, the vertex set of H1. So how many have we got? Well, the degree of V in H 
is bounded below by the minimum degree of H and that's strictly bigger than gamma by claim 2. Also, we know that all the neighbours in H of V, they must be in H1 because when we delete the intersection, um, we actually separate H1. Anything that's not in the intersection, one side gets separated from the other, right? So that implies that H1 is got at least a few vertices in it. It says that the number of vertices in H1 is at least gamma, which is at least 2k. And similarly, similarly, you can show that the number of vertices in H2 is at least 2k. All right. Also, since um, each half is non-empty, we see that neither half is all of H. Okay. So both of these H1 and H2 are strictly smaller than H. So the next observation goes like this. By minimality of H, H is the smallest subgraph that satisfies that um, condition star. So we see that H1 and H2 must both fail to satisfy star. Or in other words, neither H1 nor H2 satisfies star. Okay, and we just use that to complete the proof. Uh, we want a contradiction. So we're going to see that the number of edges in HI, since star isn't satisfied, but each of the HIs have, has got enough vertices, then the edge set must be too small. So the number of edges in HI has to be at most gamma times the number of vertices in HI minus K because star fails for both of those, i equals 1, 2. And now we can put that together with h, the number of edges of h. Well, it's at most the number of edges in h1 plus the number of edges in h2. And that might be overkill because we might have some edges um, in the intersection up here which get counted twice, but certainly as an upper bound, this is fine. But now, using um, this stuff here, the inequalities that we've got on the sizes of those two edge sets, we find that this is at most gamma times the number of vertices in H1 plus the number of vertices in H2 minus 2K. And finally, we know um, from this sort of assumption, our contradiction assumption, that the number of vertices in the intersection of U1 and U2 is at most K. You can use inclusion exclusion to see that this implies that um, this is at most gamma times the number of vertices in H minus K. And that is using inclusion exclusion for the size of H as a union of H1 and H2, right? H is H1, union H2, well, the vertex sets, and you take um, the size of the intersection away, and the fact that um, U1, intersection U2, the vertex sets of those subgraphs is at most K. And of course, what we've done here is we've contradicted the fact that H satisfies star. So this contradicts the fact that H satisfies star. And this finally completes the proof. So I'll just say completing the proof. Okay.